We're a Church of England primary school in the heart of Shepherd's Bush. But I think language learning is essential and it goes back about seven or eight years ago where we were very fortunate to have a teacher who came in who could speak Spanish and that developed the curriculum and we started off from that and then we built on it more and more and it's been fantastic. ¿Qué son las características humanas y qué son las características físicas? As it's my specialist subject, initially I was released one day a week and I went round all the classes and taught Spanish. From years one to four, I think they're always just really excited about doing languages, so they're quite happy playing lots of games, singing songs, um, you know, a little bit of writing. But I was finding that once they got to year five and year six, they were a bit bored of that approach and they wanted to do something a bit more grown up. Donde hay menos personas. Daniel. Hay menos personas en el lago Titicaca porque hay menos edificios. Excellent. Muy bien, muy bien. So at the summer school I participated in the CLIL course and that gave me some ideas about how I could make Spanish for the older children a bit more exciting and different. So with CLIL you teach another subject through Spanish, so it's not just discrete Spanish lessons. And I think it gives the lessons more purpose and the children are learning geography but they're doing it in Spanish and it's appropriate for their age. It takes their learning to a new level. They're making real sentences about real things. They're not just sort of pretending to be in a cafe ordering food. Donde hay más luces? En el Reino Unido hay más luces. Fantástico, muy bien. ¿Y otra? And I'm teaching them about Spanish-speaking countries as well, so I think that enthuses them to know about Spanish and maybe if want to travel. Muy bien, muy bien. Bueno, otro grupo. When I do my planning, I start with the geography objectives first and then I think about the Spanish. I use the pupil assessment tool and turn those ICANN statements into objectives for the Spanish lessons. And I just make sure I have a variety of speaking, listening, reading and writing. Es una característica física o humana? Amor. Las características humanas. Muy bien. I like when Spanish is mixed with geography because you're learning two things at one time but only in one lesson, which is a really good way of learning, I think. Language is used as a tool to develop new learning from a subject area or from a theme with a whole school relevance. Going to the summer school and seeing Pippa's Clear course inspired me, but we were shown just sort of one lesson, so I, I had ideas for one-off lessons I could do, but I was finding it hard to see how you could make a whole unit, you know, where, where the progression would go. So Pippa came in and we had a planning morning and she helped me plan this geography Spanish unit and she arranged for me to go and observe other teachers teaching CLIL and that gave me lots of ideas as well. She came in to observe me teaching one of the lessons that we had planned together and she gave me some feedback on it and that was really useful. You've chosen things that are directly linked to a Spanish-speaking country yeah. So there's meaning in learning about it in Spanish. It's, yeah. It sort of all ties together yeah, with the culture. Clear lessons are often yeah. taught yeah. using a lot of target language. We try to use as much target language as possible because if the lessons are well prepared, the children should be able to work out what's going on through the visuals and through the resources that are prepared. If there's any need to stop and explain something in English, that's absolutely fine. Es iquitos porque no hay edificios. Does that make sense? Uh, no. How do we need to start our sentences? Um, and very often pupils will use both English and the target language and mix them seamlessly together. Oh, I'm menos. So that should be I'm menos. I try and speak quite slowly and I try and use words that sound similar in English to help them. Also I have lots of visuals on the board usually or I do gestures to help them. But classroom instructions, I've been doing that with them from the beginning. So they're used to that because it's the same every week. Maya. Hay menos personas en Lago Titicaca porque hay Lago Grande y Montaña. Miss Williams helped me by showing me pictures. She speaks at quite a good pace, and I think everybody understands her. Fantastico, muy bien. When she's speaking, she points at pictures and words, and if we say something wrong, she explains how to say it right and why. Amen. Reno Unido. Muy bien. She mainly speaks in Spanish, and if we don't understand, she repeats it in English. 
I think the children enjoy these lessons because although they're still reusing lots of vocabulary and grammatical structures that they've learnt earlier on, they're doing it in a different way. So I think they're a lot keener to speak and to write their sentences. And I find that you know they're always asking me how to say extra things because they're really thinking about what they want to say. Hay más personas en Cusco porque hay más luces y carreteras que en Iquitos. Perfecto, muy bien. Excelente, muy bien. When we were writing sentences today, I wrote five and I also did the challenge, which was to say which of the four cities you like the most. And my answer was Iquitos because it was remote, so there wouldn't be many people or buildings and noise, which would make me happy. Me gusta más Iquitos porque hay el río, la selva tropical y menos personas. Excelente, muy bien, muy bien. My vision is the school is going to grow, so Spanish has got to grow. We've got to get it going throughout the whole school in a more formal environment. And then maybe it would be good in this lesson if you were trying to do some of the instructions a bit more in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could say, vais a trabajar en grupo, en, en parejas. OK, could you, how do I write that? I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Spanish-speaking teacher is an amazing resource to have in the school and she works with other class teachers as their mentor, as it were, to support them in delivering the Spanish curriculum. And that's been, that's been fantastic. In order to get to the stage where I could teach a Spanish lesson with a relative confidence, I think it's important to have people who've got your back and Alana's always been that person for me at the school. So we've got excelente, fantástico, bien hecho, Buenas preguntas. Buenas. Buenas. <laughs> buenas, pre buenas preguntas. Muy bien. She's my mentor. We plan the lessons together and having her there is just absolutely vital because certain things like planning, the sequence of progression, it's just invaluable really because otherwise lessons would probably just be a set of vocab words and stock phrases but she helps me kind of make it a more coherent narrative throughout the term. And they could have a little dialogue, so if someone's going in to buy something, they ask yes. for something, the shopkeeper adds it up together, they have to work out the price mm -hmm. in Spanish, and then they ask for the amount, and then a person kind of takes out their notes and pays mm -hmm. for it. And it's worked really, really well in doing the team teaching, helping resource the lessons, and I think it's made it far more favourable, a prospect to me, than it would have been otherwise had I been left to my own devices. Okay, buenos dias, amigos y amigas. Buenos dias, señorita. Señorita, I'm not a señorita. Señor. Miss Williams over there is a señorita. I am a what, Ivan? Señor. Señor. So can we try that again? Buenos dias. The language amigos, required amigas. in a primary school Buenos lesson dias. is actually not very Señor. complex. So Excellent. we're not talking about a vast vocabulary or complicated sentence constructions. So even a non-specialist could attempt this, but they would need to practice the pronunciation and they would need to be confident with the phrases and words that they were going to use. I am going to ask you, vais a trabajar en parejas, which means you're going to work in partners. You're going to work in partners as shopkeepers. I think it's just being willing to, to get stuck in. Each. I don't try and present myself as some sort of a renowned expert in Spanish. I. I'm learning and I want to pass that learning on to the children. I calculated all the items and it was 154 euros. How do you say that in Spanish? As you know, I'm learning Spanish alongside you guys, so I'll hand that over to Senorita Williams. I think it's a good thing for the children to see me as a language learner. If they see that it's not really easy for me, I think that they can kind of empathise and if they find something tricky, they're more likely to just give it a go because I make it clear that I'm doing the same. So how much is that, Leo? 32. Excelente. Very nice. Well done, guys. The LSEF has helped me and the school uh, through various means. So, for example, the meetings, the networking meetings, very good in terms of exchanging ideas, teaching practices. The project helps me engage with the standards and expectations and provides a sense of endorsement or affirmation as to what I'm doing so you don't feel like two people on an island planning 
when you see other people doing the same thing and discussing expectations and so on, it just kind of puts your mind at ease. We went to the summer school together, and whereas I was going on the courses to learn about CLIL and things like that, he was going on the language courses, so he's improving his Spanish. Quiero una consola y una muñeca. ¿Cuánto cuestan una consola y una muñeca? Por favor. Bueno, señor. Una consola cuesta... I think one of the great things is when the senior leadership team really believe that this is beneficial to the school. So if the head teacher really likes the idea of having strong languages in his school, then the staff will be very well supported. I think the LSEF project has consolidated my vision for St Stephen's. By working with the teachers, mentoring them, supporting them, I think it's giving them an amazing opportunity for professional development. They've gone out of school, they've watched other teachers, they've come back into school, they've shared that practice within the school. So we couldn't have done it without them. Excellent, muy bien, muy bien.